Hello and welcome to session four in this short demonstration of SAP Power Designer for Data Architects. In our earlier sessions, we created a conceptual data model, generated and edited a logical data model, and then we generated and edited a physical data model. And in that data model, we could see the SQL that would be used to generate individual tables or the whole database. And we also built the model of an OLAP cube. And you can see over here on the left in the browser, the conceptual, logical, and physical data models. What I'm going to do in this session is create what Power Designer calls a project to demonstrate traceability between the models themselves and between the things inside the models. The briefcase symbol up here represents a project I'm going to create one. I could use one, create one, based on a number of frameworks if I choose but that's a use of projects beyond where I want to go today. I'm going to create a simple one in a given folder. And it's called project one, let's just call it demo. And it comes complete, like everything in Power Designer, with a default diagram. And this is a special kind of diagram. On this diagram, the things you see on the diagram are not objects inside models. In this case, they are models. We have a couple of different views of models. They could also contain, of course, things that are not models in themselves. I could drag on something which is a completely different kind of file. This is an audio file called Now What I'm Going to Do. You can see it's appeared here on the left in the project. And because it's in the project, eventually I could check it into the repository. In fact, because it's in the workspace, I can check it into the repository. But I'm going to get rid of it. I don't want it on my diagram here. I can change the symbols I'm using here for the, for the models. In the display preferences, I can say for model, I want to show instead of these individual icons, I want to show the detail. And at the moment, the only detail it's showing is the uh, name of the model. And I can tell from the icon what kind of model it is. In this very simple example, it's also very obvious what model it is. Notice that each of these symbols has a little shortcut symbol on it We're telling me that this model, if I select it here, it's in a particular path. The project itself, I can see down here, is in a slightly different path. The shortcut symbol tells me the model does not reside in the projects folder, but it's simple for me to say, move it to the folder. So these files are now all maintained in the same folder as the little file that represents the project. What I can do now is tell Power Designer to rebuild the dependency links. Go and look in all the models in this project, including the ones that are closed, and go looking for the kinds of links that you can find. You can find links where one model just references another. Sometimes a model will recreate contain requirements or you're linking to a, a business rule or a domain or various other things inside another model. Generation links is where a conceptual entity becomes a logical entity, becomes a PDM table, things like that. Mapping links, where you've got mapping editor linking things, and also just straight old links where you contain a reference to an individual file. So now it's opening the models and it's actually asking me about the, the, the target models. And I'm just saying, yeah, it's making the right assumptions. Let's just turn this into a nice little step diagram. So you can see that it's realized, looking in this information, that the CDM was the source for a generation into the LDM and the LDM was a source of generation into the PDM and the PDM contains a mapping to itself. And if you remember 
the first three sessions ex exactly what we did. Over here on the browser in the left, I uh, can see the, the models and I'm just going to close them just so that the detail there doesn't distract me. I'm going to run some impact analysis at model level for the LDM. I can run it from here, choose impact lineage analysis, because this symbol is the model. I can run it from over here, impact and lineage analysis. It's going to run the same thing and give me the same results. Now the power designer impact analysis, things that come before something generally in a life cycle are impact and things that come after it are lineage. And I can choose from a number of different sets of rules here to govern what happens when you find objects when you're looking backwards and forwards in this timeline. I can also, if I choose to, actually edit these rules or even create rules of my own. If I had the repository open and these models were in there, I could select this use repository box. It needs me to log in, so I shan't do that. Use the repository box, it would actually go to the repository looking for connections that I might not even know about. Maybe other people have made connections to my models and I don't know that. So look, looking at this, what have we got here? Because it's just the models, there are not going to be very many connections here. So we can see we have this logical data model. And from it, we generated a physical data model, which actually has a data target of a data source, which has some mappings in it. Now, these global lineage analysis rules are what governs the objects that are selected, the connections that are selected here. And we can change that if we like. Or if we don't want to see something, I can actually just remove it. I press selected it and pressed delete and removed it from the analysis. I can also see this logical model generated as is another way of looking at the same thing, the physical data model. And its generation origin was the conceptual data model. And at any point, I can double click anything in this analysis to go and have a look at it. Or I could go and find the model in the browser by clicking down here. And again, see, I can run the impact and lineage analysis from here as well. In fact, I can do quite a lot from this little drop down menu. OK, what I'm going to do now is open the LDM diagram and have a look at one of our entities. Here we've got the entity loyalty account. Down here in the properties, I'm going to run the impact and lineage analysis. So this is using the same set of rules, but because we're starting from an entity, it's obviously going to give me different content. If I want to, I can actually say change. I'm going to change the, the kinds of things it's looking for. For in lineage analysis, I can actually say go down as well as going through the attributes in what's been generated and through the relationships. I can say we'll go down through identifiers and tell me what you find. So here I can see this one has got two identifiers. If you remember, I added in the uh, second session, I added an identifier to loyalty account, which is an alternate key effectively with this attribute in it. And this is all very interesting. You can see a lot of information here. If I choose to, I can actually see just a list of them and see what models they're in. If I sort this by the model name, we can see that I'm starting from an entity in the LDM, but I can see all these objects all the way down here in the CDM are also impacted. So possibly subject to change if I change this logical model object. Further option I have is to actually generate a diagram. Instead of a hierarchical representation, I can generate this diagram. So here's my starting object. And here are all the connections that that object has following those rules. If you look over here on the left in the browser, 
Power Designer has created an impact analysis model with a diagram starting from this one initial object which is that entity and it's impacting three models as we saw and we can see that we have included all these things here remember what I said in one of the earlier sessions one thing I like about power design is when you see a reference to an object you can just double click it to have a look at it here I am I'm clicking on an entity in the CDM to have a look at it I can look at one of his attributes over here in the browser. I can do it from the diagram as well because each of these is a link through to the affected thing. I won't say object because some of the things in here are not objects in their own right. Power Designer, for example, does not regard an attribute as an object. It's a sub-object within an entity. And what we've got here, we've got a dimension because there is, in our dimensional model, it is re dependent on the physical model, which is itself dependent on the logical model. Now this diagram, I can save this model. I can refresh it anytime I like, and it will rerun the impact analysis. When I look at the entity here, which is where I started, I look at its dependencies, I can see that it participates in three relationships. It was generated as a table and it actually appears in an impact analysis in the impact analysis model with this snappy title of impact analysis for entity loyal account loyalty account brackets change i can also see it appears in a particular diagram and notice it's cut off slightly it's the resolution i'm using that impact and lineage analysis can also be run from this particular tab. Very useful. And just to prove it's not just entities, if I go to attributes, I'm going to make sure I can always see the dependencies tab by customizing my favorites. Go to the dependencies tab, impact and lineage analysis again available there for anything. Okay. I'm now going to save that. It will save it in the project one folder. If I close the project, it asks me, do I want to close it? And I say yes to all, because after this, it will ask me if I want to save the LDM. I can see that because it has an asterisk after the name. There it is, there is the project. Here are my models. And if I want to open a model, I can open a model. I think this is great traceability. And one of the advantages of the project is that I can use it to check in and manage versions in the repository. You only use, of course, projects if all your models are that closely related. You want to regard them as a single set of things. So that's the end of session four. We've created a project and I've shown you the traceability. Thank you very much for watching. I've been George McGeeky and will always be George McGeeky. Goodbye.